Another topic that we study in our polar chapter is symmetry. And you're going to find out that primarily this is a visual lesson where we're just going to see some symmetry and then learn how to state it correctly. Now, just like in a geometry class, of course, when we talk about symmetry, we can have line symmetry, which would be like a reflection over a horizontal, vertical, or diagonal line. I like to think of it as folding over a line. Same idea as a reflection. Or we can have point symmetry. Now, point symmetry ends up being a reflection over a point, but it's more thought of as, at least it has to be thought of, as being uh, symmetrical over two lines. That is a horizontal line and a vertical line. All right, let's see if we can see some of this symmetry in our polar graphs, because they usually have a lot of them. 3 plus 8 cosine of theta. Do you know what kind of graph that's going to be before you put it in your calculator? Well, you're going to have to know for the test in a couple days. So yeah, you want to get thinking about your chart. But for now, we're going to put it in the calculator. Just as a friendly reminder, in the mode menu, you want to switch to polar mode. And when you hit the Y equals button, of course, you get R equals. And you can just type in 3 plus 8 cosine of theta. So were you right? That's, you get a lima sign. You actually get a lima sign with a loop. Of course, the loop has a size of 5, but our entire lima sign has a size of 8. So what do you think about symmetry? It would have to be a line that divides the graph in half. In this case, the line known as theta equals 0 would perfectly cut this graph in half. It would be symmetrical on both sides. Notice that we give the answer as an angle, excuse me, as a line represented by an angle. Or we could give the answer as the polar axis, because that's, of course, the same thing as theta equals zero degrees. Do you see any other lines of symmetry? I don't believe that there are, and I don't see any points of symmetry. Um, so we're done with our lima sign. Six cosine of three theta. Same thing, you know what graph that's going to be. Well, that's right, it's going to be a rose. Remember, the rose always has that n theta. How many petals is this rose going to have? Let's check it out on the calculator, 6 cosine of 3 theta. And our prediction is correct. We end up with too many parentheses. And we end up with a three-petaled rose. Now, roses are interesting um, because when you start thinking about lines of symmetry, you realize that if you draw a line right through the middle of the petal, that the graph would be able to fold nicely over that line. And, of course, it would fold right on top of itself. But um, why can't I draw a line through the middle of this petal? Well, I can if I can draw it straight you can see that the, the uh, rows would certainly be able to fold over that line. And even this line, that once again, goes through the middle of the petal. So how big are these lines? What's the angle? If I get rid of some of the uh, extra pieces here, it's a little more easy to see that I've actually divided up my 360 degrees. I've divided it up equally three times. And so we end up with numbers like 120 or 240 or 360. Now, that's one way to get the angle. That is by just thinking about dividing up your circle. But, uh, you know, there's a way on your calculator to figure out the value at the tip of each of these petals. And it's by carefully using the trace button. Now, I didn't show you this, but I want you guys to realize that when you trace a polar graph, you have to change the format. That's second zoom, and you change it to polar GC, which stands for polar graphing coordinates. Now, when I do that and use the trace button, I end up tracing to the, or advancing the cursor to the right, which actually just advances theta, but I end up being able to get to the tips of each of these petals. And I'm trying to get to the tip of this first petal here, and you can see that it's 120 degrees. 
Okay, so tracing a polar graph by carefully using Polar GC, which is in your format menu. I can also trace down to the tip of that next pedal and confirm that it's 240. And of course, the last one's 360. Now, maybe you saw that uh, we actually have other versions of each of these angles that was also shown on the calculator. And when we extend the pedal, or excuse me, when we, when we extend the line of symmetry past the pedal, we're able to also include these values. Now, we're getting quite a list here. Uh, to be clear, I don't need to list all of them. Um, I'm going to kind of stick with my original ones that I had. But I want you to notice something. I want you to notice that every pedal has a line of symmetry. And between every pedal, we have a line of symmetry. So roses on the pedals and between the pedals will always uh, give you a line, a fold line. Well, why don't you take a look at the next two on your own? And this would be a good part time in the lesson to pause the video and try these. Actually, try graphing six cosine and six cosine of four theta and see what these look like, and uh, then come back and we'll go over them. All right, so six cosine of theta. Did you make a prediction about what that would be? Do you know that that's going to end up being a circle? You're gonna to have to know that for the test. Looks like when you graph it on your calculator, you do get a perfect circle. Now circles, of course, are very symmetrical. This one, once again, if we draw the line theta equals zero right through the middle, looks like it balances that circle nicely. But circles, they're, they're perfectly symmetrical through the point in the center. Now that point in the center, that would be the point three radii zero degrees. And the reason that that's a point of symmetry is because I can fold my graph through a horizontal and a vertical line. Of course, if I fold it through a horizontal line, it folds down. And then if I fold it through the vertical line, I'm going to fold it over, and that circle would be right on top of itself, which is another reason why we have point symmetry. And then 6 cosine of 4 theta. Did you predict what that would be? It's once again in the form of a rose. Now this rose has an even n value, so it's hopefully not a surprise that we end up with eight petals. Now we learned that there's going to be a line of symmetry that goes through the center, that goes through the middle of these petals. But it's also true that there's going to, well, I should say we can find the value of those lines by tracing to the tip of these petals. Now, if we trace to the tip of these petals by advancing the cursor to the right, we shouldn't be too surprised that we're ending up with values that are in increments of 45. So I was at 45, now I'm at 90, you can see. If I keep advancing the cursor, looks like I'm going to be at 135. And so, yes, of course, each of these lines is 45 degrees from the previous. Now, those would just be the lines of symmetry that go through the petals. How about all the lines of symmetry that are between the petals? Okay, well, it gets to a point where maybe it's a little overwhelming and uh, we kind of say, how much of this do we need to show? Well, I want you to understand that I'm not going to make you list all of these, but it is true that they exist. And so if I ask you maybe to list two of them, would you be able to say 45? Would you be able to say 22 and a half? Of course, it's a line of symmetry, so we really should be saying theta equals. I missed one, didn't I? Yeah, there's a point symmetry here. This rose happens to be able to be folded vertically, or excuse me, folded over a horizontal line and over a vertical line. 
So yeah, I can say that the point zero radius, zero degrees, known as the pole, would also be a point symmetry for this graph. All right, so go ahead and look at the uh, exercises at the bottom. See if you can identify any point or line symmetries.